The last video for you guys today is secret IDF documents reveal the brutal reality of the 1948 ethnic cleansing. So this was called the Nakba, which is Arabic for catastrophe. 1948, 750,000 Palestinians were forcibly exiled or murdered, which I already know I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get probably most of my views cut by YouTube and nobody's actually gonna see a lot of these videos because I'm stating a lot of these things. By the way, most of the time, if you mention Israel, Palestinians, or any sort of uh, the word killing or ethnic cleansing, things like that, you're pretty much screwed. But I wanted to bring this up because I went to a couple different interesting museums, one in Israel, it was uh, the Holocaust Museum and the Jewish Museum in Berlin. And a lot of what was being said was, oh, a lot of these folks had left willingly. What? <laughs> like, <laughs> sorry, excuse me, hold on, what? So I wanted to set the record straight by reading you guys IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, their military. I wanted to read you their documents about what happens, which contrasts the public narrative that is being spread right now. And I can tell you right now, this is probably gonna be one of the more interesting videos you've learned because this is from, what is that saying? The horse's mouth, right? This is from the IDF themselves about what specifically happened and what kind of strategies they had to get rid of these individuals. Okay, so by the way, right now I wanted to show you, if you're listening to this, I'm showing on the screen right now, kind of the ways in which the refugees had moved out of the currently occupied Israeli territories into Palestinian territories and moved to Jordan and et cetera, et cetera. You get the point. I just wanted you guys to get a geographic idea about what happened here. Now, I read these documents a long time ago. I was writing this thesis on the psychology of Palestinian suicide bombers, and I recently came across it in the Washington Post. These are translated, obviously. It was written in Hebrew originally. So this is the Washington Post. I want to read you one of the quotes. This is the document itself that was translated and published by the Washington Post. Here's what it says, quote, In reviewing the factors that affected migration, we list factors that had a definitive effect on population migration. The factors, in order of importance, this is the most important part, are direct Jewish hostile actions against Arab communities, oopsie, Jewish whispering operations, psychological warfare, intended to drive Arabs to flee, the element of surprise, long stints of shelling with extremely loud blasts and loudspeakers in Arabic proved very effective when properly used. Now they mentioned also that this was effective at scary neighbor villages who were not even victims, thus causing evacuations. Other things that they had used were evacuation ultimatums, fear of Jewish retaliation upon a major Arab attack on Jews, uh, the appearance of gangs and foreign fighters near the village, Arab villages isolated with pure, within purely Jewish areas, excuse me. And so these are all different types of physical and psychological tactics in order to clear these individuals out. Now, what I have a problem with is the fact that a lot of times when we hear about these types of things, there's always kind of a, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? They're, they're kind of playing down the significance of the military force and forcibly driving these individuals away. Now, I don't know how much you guys are hearing this currently, but I can tell you going internationally to a lot of the European guilt-esque type of countries, such as Germany, by example, this is the type of things that we hear. Or, for example, obviously with Israel. And these are the types of things that they tie to the conservatives in those areas to try to justify what they had done. This obviously has significant impacts of what might happen in the future. And so they had a saying, actually, which I thought was kind of interesting. It says, quote, if the mighty have fallen... And what they were talking about is if they were able to isolate and destroy specific big towns, destroy being forcibly removing the populace and moving settlers into this area, then some of the local outskirt areas might be afraid and try to move themselves as well. Now, here's another interesting quote. Quote, without a doubt, hostilities were the main factor in population movement. Much more to the documents that I'm not going over because I don't want this to be super long. So please read it in the description box below. But I want to repeat that again. Without a doubt, hostilities were the main factor in the population movement. This is according to the IDF themselves. I love the fact that we can't even admit what this really was, which was effectively an ethnic cleansing. Again, it goes back to what we're seeing today, where people could say, well, it wasn't the intention. The intention was to clear out the space, and by default, there might have been an ethnic cleansing, more or less. Whether it was direct or indirect, it is what it is. So here's the last interesting aspect. 
around 13,000 Palestinians were killed in total, depending on where you get your information from. I'll go into that later in a different video if you would like. 70% of Gazans are refugees. This was before the war that's currently embarking right now. These are individuals who spent their entire lives and over generations into refugee camps themselves. So listen, that was an ethnic cleansing. A lot of times in these areas too, they would identify, this was earlier in different Israeli IDF archives, they would identify the leaders in a lot of these towns and they would have a public execution. What do you think is going to happen today? Currently, there is an information blackout in the Palestinian territories, and we really can't see what's going on. Last time they did these types of operations, we see precisely what is happening. Well, last time we saw, we see what's going on now that they did in the past. That's what I'm trying to say. So I think this goes down to a fundamental question of if we are defending a place like Ukraine from a Russian invasion, a permanent annexation, and we don't do the same to Israel, do you think that is going to gain us international legitimacy or make us look like an absolute joke? Because right now there's a, a power competition between us and say China. China's filling a void of, hey, maybe you guys shouldn't do this in Israel. Granted, they also think that what Russia is doing is uh, you know, not that bad. I think right now, if we decide that we're going to stick with Israel, they're going to do similar tactics. A lot of psychological operations that they've been doing we're likely going to see a surge in suicide bombers if they haven't already been enacted already based off of what I'd seen in the past and all the different research that's indicating such things. I think that the Arab communities are going to go ahead and full stop turn on us. There's already hundreds of operations that are against U.S. forces in the Middle East and elsewhere. What do you think is going to happen? And it's already too late for a two-state solution. It's going to be a South African situation. We're going to have to blend the two populations together. If you want to go into the real technical aspects, the Palestinian territory is already sectioned off in the West Bank in section A, B, and C. They don't, it's not even a clear and concise full section. Majority of Palestinian jobs were in Israel for construction and things like that. Before the war, there's already an unemployment rate of 46%. Majority are kids. And you're going to go ahead and try to kill them? I don't want to hear the fact that there's some sort of a negotiated ceasefire right now. There's still, tra uh, there's still strikes going on through that ceasefire. I don't know if you knew that or not. That's a thing. So if we actually think that we are the supporters of freedom and so on, I want to see which politicians are actually standing up right now. And I get it, right? A lot of people like myself are saying this, but we are no-name individuals who are just talking to a camera. I know a lot of folks right now are listening to this, and they probably agree with what I'm saying. What I would like to know is for you guys to keep track of who exactly are your representatives I want somebody to keep a running tally of what they have supported and what they have not. And I would like this to haunt people in the future because there's going to be folks in the future who are going to say, oh, I support freedom, I support all this other shit. But at the same time, we can point to this very moment and be like, oh yeah, hey, do you remember that time you were trying to support that ethnic cleansing and now you want to do another military operation to support freedom here and there? Y'all are a bunch of absolute psychopaths, and this is precisely why the American people trust absolutely none of you. None of you. And we are losing trust internationally because of stuff just like this. We are living through history at this very moment. And I bet folks probably think they're on the right side, despite the fact that there are a lot of babies that are being killed at this very moment. 